Good morning, church. So nice to see your faces again. Although you're wearing a mask, I can still, I know who you are. We're in the book of Jeremiah. That's Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Now, before I begin the message, there's something I want to ask of you. Now, you know, we have messages that we sit down and concentrate and soak in to our spirit. But this is not one of them. Yes, it has to soak into our spirit, yes. But the Lord wants to hear from us this morning. He wants to know that you are in agreement with some of the things that I am going to say. I'm going to be making some bold statements that I believe in. And I know that most of you believe in. But there may be some of us, someone close to you that needs to hear that there are others who believe what is being said. Amen? Amen. So we're not to be quiet this morning, although we are muzzled with the mass. This is not a morning to be quiet, yes? So let's make some noise for our Jesus this morning, yes? Yes. Amen, amen. So we are taking it in chapter 29, verse 1. We'll be taking it from verse 1, and then we're jumping to 4, to 14. So we have some reading to do. I'm reading from the New King James Version. This is Jeremiah 29. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the remainder of the elders who were carried away captive, to the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. Verse 4. Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, To all who carried away captive, whom I've caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. Build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands, so that they may bear sons and daughters. That you may be increased there and not diminished. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive and prayed to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in the midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dream. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good work towards you and cause you to return to this place. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not evil to give you a future and a hope. Then you will call upon me and go pray to me, and I will listen to you. And you will seek and find me. When you search for me with all your heart, I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations, from from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to the place from which I cause you to be carried away captive." Now here it is, the prophet Jeremiah is writing to the captives in Babylon on God's behalf. And he's telling them in verse 5, build houses and dwell in them. Plant gardens and eat their fruit. Take their wives and beget sons and daughters. And take wives for your sons and give your daughters to husbands. So that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminished. Keep in mind, my brothers and sisters, these people are in exile They're in captivity. This is not their land. And the first thing the prophet is telling them, move on with your lives. Live. 
This is what this verse refers to. God is telling his people to live. And this morning, our wonderful counselor is bringing this message to us. Why? Just take a look around. We are muzzled wearing masks. We have restrictions placed on us because of this pandemic. All our plans were either put on hold, changed, or squashed. Feels like if we're in two in captivity, yes? But our God is bigger than all the negativity that surrounds us. He's bigger than any problem we might be facing. He knows 2020 was a challenging year. And although 2021 will have its own challenges, our God is reminding us this morning of his faithfulness. And he wants us to step out in faith as children of God. Lift our heads up knowing he is in control. And he will pull us through. Amen? As children of God, we are not supposed to be worried, bitter, resentful, stressed, or depressed, to name a few. This is not what God wants for us. In our text, God was sending a message to his people in captivity to move on with their lives. No doubt they are feeling like some of us during this year, or worse. But God was telling them, and he's telling us today, don't give up. Get up. Move on. Move on with our lives. Make the best of what we have. We still have life, my brothers and sisters. We still have life. We are living and breathing. He got us through our past storms, yes? And he will do it again. He will do it again and again. Keep in mind, when God is telling us to live, though, he's not saying to live it up, eh? <laughs> you know, you know, when some people are here to live it up, they can do all sorts of things, <laughs> you know? We need to live according to the will of God, yeah? Continue to work every day aligning our lives with his word. <laughs> Psalm 119, 105 tells us, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Every day, seek God's direction for our lives. He will put us on the right path. He will help us to figure out what he wants from us and for us, during, especially after during this pandemic storm. You know, you might be asking now, how can I move on? How can I move on, Brother Richard, with, with my life? I lost my job. You know, my business is, has squashed. All my plans are squashed for this year. How can I move on? Well, while seeking God's guidance and waiting on his answer, maybe we can get busy on God's work. Get into ministry, volunteer work. See where your expertise can help someone. You know, there may be something that you need to experience along the way to help you with God's future plan for you. You know, it, or it could just be as simple as, you know, Someone needs our help, and God needs to use us. Amen? So let's get busy with God's work. You know, one thing God does not want for us is to be anxious about this situation. He does not want us to just sit down and become useless. He does not want us to throw a pity party. Philippians 4, 6 reminds us, be anxious for nothing. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? You know, if it's one thing God wants for us is peace. Children of God can experience peace when we stay connected to our Savior in our storms, amen? And Paul is telling us not to be anxious, but pray about everything, and we will experience peace. God, through his prophet Jeremiah in our text, also told the captives to seek peace. Seek peace and pray. Pray for the city they were sent into exile. 
Let's look at verse 7. And seek the peace of the city where I have caused you to be carried away captive. And pray to the Lord for it. For in its peace, you will have peace. In other words, when the city experiences peace, they will also be at peace. And similarly, when we pray for our nation and the nations around the world, and the leaders of these nations, we too will benefit from it. And that's what we do in, in, in corporate prayer, yes? yes? We must not be resentful, my brothers and sisters. We must, must not be resentful and hating the decision makers who had to make choices that affected us negatively. Especially during this pandemic season. We need to lift them up and our situation and place it in God's hands and move on. First Timothy 2.1.4 reminds us, I urge you, first of all, to pray for all people. Ask God to help them. Intercede on their behalf and give thanks for them. Pray this way for kings and all who are in authority so that we can live peaceful and quiet lives marked by God's by godliness and dignity. This is good and pleases God, our, our Savior. Who, who wants everyone to be saved and to understand the truth? Amen? Amen. Verse 8 and 9. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, do not let your prophets and your diviners who are in the midst deceive you, nor listen to your dreams which you cause to be dream. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, says the Lord. You know, the last part of this verse 9 is key. I have not sent them, says the Lord. We need to be careful who we counsel with, my brothers and sisters. In these times, so many are vulnerable and desperate for quick solutions and things that would make us feel good, giving us false hope. Be careful who we get our spiritual guidance from, the source of our information and the prophecies we listen to. If the information, the advice, and the lives of the individuals we are getting it from, if it's not lined up with God, the Word of God, it's not from God, amen? We need to get into the habit of bringing everything to our wonderful counselor, our Holy Spirit through prayer. And wait. We don't like waiting. But wait on an answer or a confirmation before accepting everything that is dropped on our lap, so to speak. We need to confirm it came from the Lord, amen? Verse 10 says, For thus says the Lord, after 70 years are completed at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word towards you and cause you to return to this place. Now I know if you didn't have your mask on, I'll be seeing some of your panic faces. No, this does not mean that we have to wait so long for this pandemic to be over. But God gave them an appointed time. Their captivity will come to an end. Genesis 18, 14 tells us, Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. Then Genesis 21, 2 says, For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God has spoken to him. Now, we may not know the appointed time for this pandemic season to end or any storms in our life to end, but God's timing is always perfect. He is a faithful God, and he keeps his promises. Just as he kept his promise and big blessings came to Abraham and Sarah at their appointed time, my brothers and sisters, God will bring an end to this storm and all storms we face 
at his appointed time. Amen? Therefore, we need to trust him and wait on his perfect timing. Psalm 139, 4 reminds us, you know what I'm going to say even before I say it, Lord. We need to trust in an all-knowing God, a God that knows what we're about to say even before we say it. When he says in verse 11 of our text, using the, I'm using the Amplified Version, we need to trust in the God who knows what we're about to say even before we speak. And he says in verse 11, For I know the thoughts and plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans for welfare and peace and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. Now, won't you agree this is the best person to trust with your plans? Jesus Christ? Is this the best person? Yes. <laughs> the only person. Amen. This is someone who knows our future. And hence the reason we, we need to seek his guidance each step of the way to achieve our plans and his plans for us. We need to trust that whatever plans he has for us and, and, and due to this pandemic, if it has been dissolved, it, it was not God's plans for us after all. If it's on pause and it's for us, God will find a way for it to be resumed. And for those of us who are in limbo, we need to seek guidance from the Lord and wait for him to reveal his plan for us. We all need to allow him to use this time to refine us. You know, God is always building character. And you've heard this before. And he's saying to, to, saying it to us again this morning. He's always building character and preparing us for what he has planned for us. So we must accept this and submit to his will for us. In other words, work with him. We need to work with him to achieve what he wants for us. We need to work for, with him for what he wants to achieve for us and what he wants from us. By waiting on his guidance and waiting on a confirmation, confirmation is always important, on what we think he's trying to tell us. You know, some of us tend to hear what we want to hear. And we tend to look for signs to do what we want to do. So we will jump at the first sign that we then say, okay, this is a confirmation from God. Because it was the answer that we wanted. But the good news, when we go off track and we seek the Lord for his guidance, he's a merciful and compassionate God and he will put us right back on track. Amen? Amen. As a people of God, we need to trust that God knows exactly where he wants us to be after this pandemic season. We need to trust him with that. And he will work things out for our good. So hold on. He said his thoughts and plans for us are welfare, welfare and peace, not, even, not evil, in our final outcome. You know, this tells me whatever happens, whatever road we go on, whatever road he puts us back on, we are going to end up in a good place. Amen? Amen. Therefore, we need to trust him in the storms, despite the turmoil that we are experiencing. If we can continue to live in his will for us by his word, he will take us through to a good and peaceful outcome. Verse 12. Then you will call upon me and go and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. And as a people of God, we are reminded that nothing, there's nothing that could prevent us from having a relationship with God. All we need to do is to reach out in prayer. Whatever the circumstances, even if we disappointed him, he's available to us. We just need to reach out to him. God's desire is to have a friendship with us. And in these times, there is no better friend to have than Jesus. Amen? Amen. You know, you can tell him anything, and he, he would not tell anybody else. 
Trust me. <laughs> he loves us unconditionally. He wants the best for us. And trust, he will always have our backs. Amen? My brothers and sisters, 2020 has been a tough, tough year, yes? And honestly, I don't know how anyone is surviving without Jesus in their lives. I don't know. But for us who have a relationship with Christ, we need to know the enemy is also on overtime to get us turned off from wanting and maintaining a relationship with our Jesus. And this has happened to some of our brethren. He will give it his all to discredit us in front of all in unbelievers. Therefore, we need to pray more and seek for a deeper and closer relationship with our Holy Spirit. Trust me, our Holy Spirit never feels harassed. As a matter of fact, he wish we can call on him and depend on him more. John 14, 26 of the Amplified tells us the functions of our Holy Spirit. But the Comforter, Counselor, Helper, Intercessor, Advocate, Strengthener, and Standby, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, in my place, to represent me and act on my behalf. He will teach you all things. Now, why would we turn to someone else when we have a friend like Jesus with all these functions and we have him with us, inside of us, all day, all night? We need to pray for help from our Holy Spirit because, you know, this, the frustrations this pandemic is bringing on, it, it, it tests how we relate to others, huh? It has been testing our character building days. When we come home or we in work, how we relate to others. I think 2020 probably had the more character building days for some of us than in any other year. But 1 Corinthians 13, 4, 7 of the NLT reminders that love is patient and kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. It is not irritable and keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices when the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Amen? And Paul is giving us a description of what love is, and we need to understand That only God can give us the ability to love like this. This love describes the essence of God's character. This is how God loves us. And only our Holy Spirit can enable us to love this way. I don't know if you ever noticed, but when your prayer life is good and you're connected to God, you know, we, we handle stress better, yes? We can relate to others better. We are much calmer. So we need to depend on our Holy Spirit to love what God requires of us to love others in this season where we are being tested and our character building days to really show what we are made of. Amen? Verse 14. I will be found by you, says the Lord, and I will bring you back from your captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, says the Lord, and I will bring you to a place from which, you, which I cause you to be carried away captive. My brothers and sisters, people of God, God answers our prayers, yes? God answers our prayers. And he's a God of restoration. So hold on and trust in his perfect timing. He will even restore us to a better place than we were before this pandemic. Job 42.10 tells us, And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. 
Indeed, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. See what happens when we take our eyes off of our own problems and we focus on others. Our God of restoration knows our hearts and he will give us a, he will give us a way, way more than we are expecting. You know, on Friday, the whole world will be celebrating Christmas, but with lots of changes, lots of restrictions, less gatherings, and for some, less gifts. <laughs> but there's one thing that we as children of God can count on that never changes. And there's no less than of. And there's no new normal when it comes to our God. <laughs> our God is a faithful God, amen? <laughs> He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. So let us stand and worship our God. Let us stand and worship our God and give him all the praises this morning. morning. All the praise and honor and glory. Because he has been such a good, good God. Amen? Amen. He has been such a good God to us. With all that is going on this year. Look at us. How good we are looking. Yeah? He's a great God. Great is his faithfulness. Amen? Let's sing.
And some of us may be a little hesitant to do that based on what we face this year. But based on what we heard, God's plans for us are good. And we need to trust him with these plans. Place it in his hands. And, and he doesn't want us going into 2021, you know, all depressed and wondering what's next. No. Our confidence comes in living with Christ in us. Our confidence comes in living in his, with his, in his word and his will. So, although we are muzzled and we're songing good, God needs to hear us make this bold declaration of our trust in him with his, his plans for us. Amen? We need to go into 21 trusting God with our plans. Amen? Let's sing.
because some of us are looking at our present situation and all that has gone through this year and we're listening to the news and you know and and we are just trying to figure this out we're trying to figure out 2021 but God is asking us this morning trust don't figure it out don't try to figure out how it's going to work out. He said in Isaiah, Isaiah 43, 19, Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. People of God, only Jesus Christ can make a way where there is no way. Only Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's sing.
always working. I know we are cutting it close, but this is the last one. And this is a bold declaration for 2021. We need to hold on to this one tight, 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 tight. Even if things get a little rough, we need to hold on to it tight, tight, tight. Matthew 19, 26 says, but with men, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. Jeremiah 32, 27 says, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And Mark 5, 36 says, Do not be afraid, only believe. Amen?
Well, if you enter 2021 being afraid, worried, concerned, after this message, we would need to have a deliverance service just to deliver you from those conditions. God bless you richly. You may be seated.